I've been wanting to talk with everyone about a Switch launch title that's had a lot of praise lately. It's a crafty little game known as Snipper Clips. I've been wanting to talk about it and give my thoughts on the game specifically for the fact that some have asked questions about what I think of it and whether it's even worth a $20 price tag on the eShop and stuff like that. My question is, how is that even a question? Snipper Clips, dude, it is really a great time. Is it worth the money though? Absolutely. It turns out, Snipper Clips is my second favorite launch game on the Switch next to none other than The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's so quirky and imaginative and I absolutely love that. It's pretty straightforward you would think. Snipper Clips. Snip, clip, already by its title containment, you may get the idea that it is a semi-crafty game. And trust me, that is a giant understatement. I was interested in getting it to begin with, but my mindset was that, oh, this looks okay, maybe I'll play this when I'm bored or something. Turns out, I ended up loving it. What is it that made Snipper Clips so special though? Seemingly praising this game to the top of the universe isn't doing any good simply because I'm not even talking about the game itself yet, but I just wanted to get that part out of the way so you know my initial thoughts on it and how fun I thought it would actually be. But basically, in a nutshell, Snipper Clips is a co-op puzzle game for up to 4 people where you take control of these characters named Snip and Clip. These guys are literally just rectangular shapes with one rounded side, and they rotate, and as the name suggests, they snip and they clip their way to victory. It may be a worthy thing to note here that, yes, there are a lot more things you can do in this game than you would probably think. What's so special about rotating your characters to snip into different shapes though? Is it actually that boring? Um, heck no. It's a mind game most of the time, and that's what's so charming about it. It can get so challenging at times, and that was something I didn't at all expect. There's so many different types of levels. There's one where you have to get a bowling ball into a basketball hoop, or another where you have to sharpen a pencil, or where there's actually a ball in a labyrinth controlled by each character to guide a ball into the hoop. And just, holy cow. This game has a lot of really crafty ideas. It never does feel the same within each level though. There's always some kind of variance between them, even if there are a couple different types of the same. Rotating and cutting shapes is absolutely dire to the gameplay, and that's literally the only thing that makes it work. I mean, literally. You're not going to be able to play this game without some kind of snipping between players, and that whole interactive aspect is amazing. I mean, that's kind of what the game is built around. Each of the worlds all have their own theme, and personally though, the first one is still my favorite. It introduced me to what is seemingly on its way to becoming a super unique, frequent forthcoming Nintendo IP. It's something that hasn't been done before, and somehow, some way, Nintendo has a knack for creating games like that one right after the other. Splatoon, Snipper Clips, Arms, and etc. So with that said though, of course it's worth the money. The only thing that really drives me crazy here though is the fact that they say this game can be played with 2 or even 4 players, but in all reality, that's actually how it should be played. It forces you to interact with another person because this is a game that requires teamwork. And if you're like me, finding people to play this game with may be a little difficult because you're a loner in real life, but it's okay, life gets better yo. But my point is, it's a ton of fun when you are playing the game with people. But the only negative experience I ran across in this game is playing it in single player, funnily enough. It just doesn't bring me the same joy the multiplayer does. But overall, it's really such a joyful, fun little game. I can almost guarantee it'll get sequels, and you know, the reason I say that is, it's just one of those games you would expect to have. It's one of those games everybody adores and then eventually it does get a sequel, like Splatoon happened with, or Captain Toad from Super Mario 3D World. And it's challenging now and then, and the music is catchy, and it just makes you think. And the attention to detail is incredible, whether it be the sound effects of snip and clip while making jumps, or slowly creeping towards one another, or the fun and quirky faces they make as they're crouching, or on their tiptoes. Details like that are what I love in a game, and I guess Never Close is just something I've been needing for quite some time. So to answer your question, yes, it is very worth the money. So thank you all so very much for listening and getting my thoughts on whether Snipper Clips is worth the money or not. Heck yes, it is. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you next time. Bye.